Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa 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 we were discussing uh, verses 40 to 46 uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 of the Quran. And um, inshallah, be, before we move to verses 47 and onwards, I'd like to also read to you some of the comments made by a famous Indian uh, scholar of uh, tafsir, Quran exegesis, uh, in his book called uh, Pondering Over the Quran, Tadabbur al Quran. He has certain insights that uh, are quite unique to his book that you, uh, it's very difficult to find in any other book. So we had stopped at uh, when we discussed uh, the word ithm, right? Um, um, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what was the verse that mentioned the ithm? Al-bir, sorry, the, the word bir. The opposite of al-bir. Uh, bir Now, uh, the opposite of al-bir is uh, al-ithm, which could mean um, sin or evil in general, or violation uh, of a trust, or uh, can we switch off the alarm, please? Or violation of a trust. Uh, so this is the meaning of ithm. Allah mentioned both uh, in a verse وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ So he, he called, uh, he mentioned the bir and taqwa, piety and bir, which is, bir means doing good deeds and fulfilling the promise, being truthful and so on. We talked about al bir. And he, the opposite of, of it was ithm wa'udwan, transgression and evil or sin. Um, also there's a hadith that uh, places ithm, the word ithm, the exact opposite of al-bir. There's a hadith uh, narrated by a sahabi, his name is Wabisa ibn Ma'bad. He says, I came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, before Wabisa actually op- uh, started talking to the messenger, the messenger, peace be upon him, said to him, جِئْتَ تَسْأَلُ عَنِ الْبِرِّ وَالْإِثْمِ He actually uh, initiated the conversation, the messenger, and he says, you came to ask me about al-bir and ithm, uh, and that of course is uh, yani a miracle of the Prophet, that Allah uh, showed him what the person was going to ask him before he actually asked him. He says, you came to ask me about al-bir and ithm. He says, yes. So he mentioned to him what al-bir is, he defined it to him. Um, he, uh, he said, al-birru matma'annat ilayhi nafs wa matma'anna ilayhi al-qalb. Wal-ithmu ma haka fi nafs wa taraddada fi sadr the meaning is that the bir is something the heart and the soul feels at ease with while al-ithm the evil is something that the, 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 the sound heart and the sound soul will not accept will always be hesitant about and confused about not uh, showing some dislike towards it and he says, وَإِنْ أَفْتَاكَ وَإِنْ أَفْتَاكَ الْمُفْتُونَ In some narration, وَإِنْ أَفْتَاكَ النَّاسُ وَأَفْتَوْكَ He says, regardless of what fatwa you get. Because some people can go and get a fatwa, a religious edict from a scholar. Maybe because they did not really describe the case to the scholar appropriately. Because they were wanting the scholar to give them the answer that they wanted. Right? Subhanallah, so, this happens a lot in divorce where, you know, um, the person knows if he meant divorce or not, but then he goes to the scholar and says, oh, I was so angry, I didn't know what I was saying. That happens so much. And the scholar then gives him the fatwa, okay, so you didn't know what you're saying? No, I didn't know. Like, you're good. <laughs> but then he goes home and he knows that he meant it, and he, he really knew what he was saying, right? So then he feels, oh, I'm, I'm, I might be wrong, maybe. And he'll keep, stay, he'll stay like this for so long, right? So this is the meaning of al-bir and ithm. Um, also, we mentioned the verse Allah uh, recommended for the people who found it difficult to embrace Islam and leave their leadership positions as leaders, leaders in their own religion, because these verses were directed to the children of Israel, including their scholars, or people who had certain material benefits and worldly gains from them being... Um, uh, professing the faith that they, uh, you know, uh, professed before. So now, 
Allah is calling them to believe in the last prophet. Ya Bani Israela. And then he says to them, You have to believe in what I had revealed, confirming what you have. So this is a direct call for the children of Israel to believe in the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that's a clear answer for those people who say that the Prophet Muhammad was sent to the Arabs, while Prophet Moses was sent to the Israelites, while Prophet Jesus was sent to the Christians and so on. No. The children of Israel including the Christians and the Jews, this commandment applies to them, Bani Israel, that they have to believe in the Prophet Muhammad. And then Allah says to them, this, you know, to, to let go of this attachment to your previous religion or whatever keeps you, like maybe it could be the habit, maybe because this is all you've known all your life, because it's a religion of your family and you, they might, might cut ties with you. You might be a religious leader and you might lose that position. You might be earning some uh, money from whatever service you provide for that religion and you will lose that as well. So uh, there's some difficulty. So Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ salah." So Allah gave them the remedy to this, that they should seek help and strength uh, in uh, exercising patience at losing all these things, if, if they have to lose something, and in uh, strengthening their connection with Allah through prayer, as-salah. This combination of as-sabr and salah is repeated in the Quran, I will show you in multiple other verses. Allah says in, in the same Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, I think I have verse number 153, uh, amanu. So this was a call to the Israelites, the children of Israel, but also the call to believers, Ya ladina amanu. إِسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Here, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا الْخَاشِينَ Same kind of wording, but here it, uh, it was, he was addressing the children of Israel, and here in the second verse, 153 of Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah tells us that sabr uh, needs to be exercised, especially in وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وحين البأس البأساء is uh, poverty ضراء means illness so بأساء is in the wealth ضراء is in the in the health وحين uh, البأس times of war so times of war times of illness times of financial difficulty uh, those require patience that's also in Surah Al-Baqarah as well والصاب, Allah, when the, Allah describes uh, the believers. Actually, uh, this verse this verse describes the people who show bir or exercise bir. And then he says, وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ Scholars say, uh, and he, uh, Amin Islahi, the uh, author of this book, says, sabr and salah, they're really uh, linked together. Sabr reinforces salah because you cannot keep up the salah regularly without some kind of patience and you know perseverance consistently consistency some kind of uh, sacrifice uh, you have to sometimes sacrifice some sleep uh, some rest some time some work some work you have to give some kind of sacrifice to do the salah regularly right um, and at the same so the the, the sabr patience helps you perform salah and salah gives you more patience uh, so this is like a, a, a self-renewing kind of remedy. Sabr imp uh, improves your salah, and salah improves your... Now, and actually they're mentioned together in more than one hadith. You can see the hadith uh, in which the Prophet ﷺ says, uh, وَالصَّلَاةُ نُورُ وَالصَّبْرُ ضِيَاءُ A salah is, is, is a light. وَالصَّبْرُ ضِيَاءُ means light, but light associated with some heat as well. This is the uh, and Allah says this in the Quran. Right? Shams he called Diya. Qamar he called Noor. Difference is Shams is the source of the light. The, the sun is a source of light and the, its light has heat with it, intensity. While the light of the moon is nice and gentle and soft without any heat, right? Uh, and uh, and says was salatu nur, was sabru diya, was sadaqatu burhan. So all these are mentioned in, in one hadith. The fact that we need 
sabr and patience to keep our salah is very clear in the hadith in which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, uh, he was asking, uh, uh, he, he was asked what are, uh, what are the kafarat, things that uh, uh, basically expiate and cleanse the one from sin. He says, إسباغ الوضوء على المكاره وكثرة الخطى إلى المساجد وانتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة فذلكم الرباط فذلكم الرباط فذلكم الرباط نعم. He says to perform wudu even at times when you dislike it such as you just woke up from sleep or it's cold or you know or you have to take off some or your fancy clothes off or something <laughs> wearing a suit you know sometimes difficult إسباغ الوضوء على المكاره كثرة الخطى إلى مساجد frequently taking steps to the masjid انتظار الصلاة بعد الصلاة waiting for a salah after a salah and then he says فذلكم الرباط الرباط is to uh, a rebat is when somebody stays at the uh, border of the land for instance to guard it from the from attacks of the enemy so he stays away from his family stays at a very outpost uh, and uh, it needs so much patience because it's so quiet and nothing to do and he's away from his family and he has to be vigilant all the time uh, it's 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 some it's one of the most difficult forms of striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ذلكم الرباط and that's why al-murabit the one who performs ribat uh, there's a hadith that indicate that Allah will uh, continue his reward like after he dies the same deeds he was doing uh, the, the, and, the, and the, the reward for the ribat will continue till the day of judgment his, his deeds are ca- continue to carry on they don't stop now I will uh, finish very quickly here and then, uh, and then, وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Khushu'ah is needed for the salah. And khushu'ah is attained by remembering Allah and remembering that we will meet Allah. This is mentioned very clearly in those verses. We've discussed them before. And the, the link between khushu'ah and salah, look at this. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Also, وَيَدَعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ يَدْعُونَنَا They ask us in fear and awe. And uh, and in love, reverence and love, and, and they humble themselves before us. Now, uh, the link between sabr and salah also is mentioned in <coughs> in verses such as yes, these verses such as قال موسى لقومه استعينوا بالله واصبروا Musa said to his people, seek help from Allah and asbiru. Seek help, this is prayer. Asbiru is patience. The combination, the link between the two is mentioned here. Also, the verse that we've been discussing, وَاسْتَعِنُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ And the verse number 153 in Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ أَمْنُوا بِالصَّبْرِ And the verse, فَاصْبِرْ عَلَىٰ مَا يَقُولُونَ Have patience. وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا This also refers to, refers to, to prayer. سَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Or to the azkar, to dhikr. All this is forms of prayer. And sabr is linked to it. فَاصْبِرْ عَلَىٰ مَا يَقُولُونَ Another verse. وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِ The first one is in Surah Taha. This one is in Surah Qaf. Also, وَاصْبِرْ الْحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِيَعْرِنَا وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ حِينَ تَقُومِ Inshallah, we'll stop here. Now. Yeah.